Today we discuss that topic pregnancy. My name is Dr. Farhan Khan from Gaini Department. What is a topic pregnancy? <clears throat> Any pregnancy, you know, normally pregnancy is situated in the uterine cavity. Any pregnancy which is situated outside uterine cavity is known as a topic pregnancy or a fertilized woman is implanted outside the normal uterine cavity. Now, what is the incidence of uh, ectopic pregnancy? If the 150 to 300 women conceives, then only one pregnancy could be a pregnancy. And in which moment this incidence occurs or there is a chance of ectopic pregnancy when a woman is taking ovulation induction, means infertility treatment or IVF technologies. This is also an infertility treatment when there uh, she underwent tubal surgeries for whatever the reason is when a patient placed IUCD in situ and uh, increase in PID or STDs when there is uh, pelvic inflammatory disease or sexually transmitted disease. What happens? The anatomy of the pelvic cavity distorted and it causes um, adhesions, less mobility of the fallopian tube. And when that pregnancy occurs, then there is more chances that this pregnancy could be ectopic. Now, this is the diagrammatic uh, diagram in which we are showing that where the ectopic pregnancy could occur. Most, this is the ovary, fallopian tube, and this is uterine cavity. Normally, what happens? This fimbria take up the over the end from the cervix, sperm moves, 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 and normally there is fertilization occur at this part of the fallopian tube. Now, but as I told you, the risk factors when there is PID or when there is tubal surgery, the internal environment of the uh, tube is distorted and because of that the ciliary movement the normal cilia which is present in the fallopian tube does not work that much which is normally happened then what happens this fertilized ovum couldn't move from here to there and it is implanted mostly at that part of the fallopian tube and this is known as ectopic pregnancy. Most common site, there are different sites of the ectopic pregnancy. Now, this is, you know, intramural part of the fallopian tube, isthmic part of the fallopian tube. Intramural is that part which is embedded in the uterine cavity. Isthmus is the uh, very uh, narrow part adjacent to the intramural and ampullary. This is long ampullary part. Ampullary part is slightly dilated. And this is infundibulum. And this is ostia or fembula. Tubal ostia folds and fembula. Now, if a patient have one ectopic pregnancy, then what is the risk in next pregnancy? This is 15%. And if the patient has two ectopic pregnancies and the third pregnancy could be ectopic, the risk is 25%. As I told you, what is the cause? Because there is any factor which cause delayed transport of the fertilized ovum from the fallopian tube. As I told you, that fertilized ovum, fertilization occur in that part and from that, Ovum travels and enter into the uterine cavity. Any uh, thing which hamper in the transport of that fertilized ovum cause the tubal pregnancy. These factors may be congenital or ectopic. Congenital is tubal hypoplasia when tubal is not uh, so much length and its length is short. And when the tube is very tortuous, the congenital, any congenital diverticuli, accessory ostia, partial stenosis, means for partially block hogi, was other tortuous hogi, or there is short, it is short. 
what is the acquired causes as we discussed earlier any inflammatory condition like PID, septic abortion, contraception. These cause intraluminal adhesions. Then surgical tubal reconstructive surgeries, any surgery in which there is a tubal blockage, and then we reconstruct the tube and we can analyze the tube. Any neoplasia of like broad ligament myoma, vagal tumor, and miscellaneous causes cause LUCD, endometriosis, a previous ectopic pregnancy. Now, you can see in this diagram that these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, these are the different sites where other than uterus, pregnancy can occur norm normally in the uterus, but other than uterus and known as ectopic. Most common site, as I told you, that the fertilization occurs in the ampulla. And this is the most, more than 85% of the ectopic pregnancy occurs there. 1% in the uh, fimbrial portion and uh, or osteal portion. Third, as pregnancy travels through here, then sometimes what happens, most commonly fertilization occurs here in the ampullary region. Ovum or embryo travels, 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 but the isthmus portion is such a narrow that sometimes it obstructs here and there is a chance of a topic to occur here. This is third site. Now fourth site is cornwall. Fourth site occur in the fallopian tube only. You can see that four sides of fallopian tube may be What are the other sites? Now, after fallopian tube, the most common site is uh, site is ovary. Then, other than this portion, the part of the sides are there, like cervix, which is two percent. Then, um, any. Uh, portion, any fibroid or myoma or that, seven in the abdomen and nine when there is uh, in the broad ligament. This is broad ligament in the broad ligament. Yeah. This is radioentry horn of the uterus. Now, what happens with the patient or female when she has an ectopic pregnancy? First of all, every pregnancy causes amenorrhea. So, amenorrhea. Then she can present with, the, there are two types of symptoms, acute symptoms and chronic symptoms. Acute symptoms mostly occur when there is rupture of that ectopic pregnancy and chronic when it is present, but patient doesn't now, what happens? First of all, there is amenorrhea, abdominal pain, syncope attacks, vaginal bleeding, and when we do the pelvic examination or ultrasound, then we got a pelvic mass. What are the signs? When we examine the patient, there is abdominal tenderness, culling sign, adenexal tenderness, cervical motion tenderness. Now, as I told you, the culling sign, I will explain it later on. Sign and symptoms in the this culling sign present in the uh, structure ectopic. What happens in the rupture ectopic in acute emergency and patient comes with acute symptoms. Patient has severe abdominal pain, culling sign, periamrical bruising, rebound tenderness and guarding, abdominal fullness with decreased bowel sounds, and vaginal examination shows fullness in pouch of tenderness due to the collection of pus or due to the mass. Now what are the, as the patient comes in the acute condition, have the pain in the lower abdomen, then what are the, have PV bleeding, what are the differential diagnosis? It could be a appendicitis as if she have the uh, right ectopic, then it can mimic or resemble like an appendicitis. There is uh, amenorrhea followed by PV bleeding. Then this could be misplaced threatened portion. There is torsion, ovarian cyst or rupture ovarian cyst. 
palliative inflammatory disease, but there is no amenorrhea history in the palliative inflammatory disease. However, pain is like that. Sulfingitis, endometritis, these are the types of the palliative inflammatory disease. Nephrolithiasis, as you know, when there is any obstruction or when there is a stone in the kidney, then it gives severe pain, but there is no history of amenorrhea, no history of um, PV bleeding. Yes, there is syncope and severe pain. Ovarian torsion also don't have amenorrhea or PV bleeding. Then infrauterine pregnancy, which could be threatened or which could be incomplete waste scarage. Now, how we diagnose with that complicated condition? First of all, the very easy and, uh, and non lethal method is beta HCG. As we all know, that beta HCG confirmed the pregnancy or the very confirmative test for the pregnancy and it doubles after 24 to 48 hours. So, we will go for the beta HCG for the confirmation of the whether it is a pregnancy uh, present or not. Then ultrasound is scanning. As this is very early pregnancy, so vaginal ultrasound is very much uh, useful in that. Then laparoscopy rarely used as it is an invasive procedure. Serum progesterone, this is also not really helpful. The most helpful is with HCG and uh, vaginal transvaginal ultrasound. Transvaginal ultrasound can uh, visualize a sac as early as four to five weeks from last menstrual period. During this time, the beta HCG is 2000 international unit per liter. When beta HCG level is greater than this and there is an empty uterine cavity on TVS, then always we suspect the ectopic pregnancy. And when the value of beta HCG does not double in 48 hours, ectopic pregnancy will be confirmed. When there is intrauterine pregnancy, uh, beta HCG doubled in after every 48 hours. But in ectopic, not up to 48 hours and not up to that level. As you see, this is in the image one, there is an empty uterus. There is a distended portion this is the distended portion. This is cavity. There is no uh, intrauterine pregnancy. This is bladder. And there is a mass outside the uh, uterine cavity. But this is an intact mass. There is no signs of rupture. This is an intact round mass. And 1.7 into 1.6 centimeter. In that patient, we can feel the cervical excitation. What is cervical excitation? When we do the pearl vaginal examination, we found the cervical motion tenderness. This is known as cervical excitation. And tenderness over left visit shows up on the palpation. Other labs, we can go for the complete blood count because if there is infection, like in nephrolithiasis, sarcoiditis, and arthritis, PID, there is mucocytosis. To confirm, urine analysis with microscopic exam, as I told you in nephrolithiasis, to rule out and to make our uh, confirmatory diagnosis. Blood type and RH system, because if there is structure ectopic, then we have to give the NTD prior to surgery or after surgery. Now, what is the management at that? Patient. There are two types of management, whether the patient comes in an acute condition or chronic condition. In acute condition, mostly the surgery is the option and in chronic condition, we can go for the medical and expected management. Surgical options are um, surgically administrated medical treatment, medical treatment and expected. Now, what is the medical treatment? The most common medical treatment is methotrexate and then potassium chloride. But now potassium chloride is not, not given. Uh, Mifepristone is not available in Pakistan. Prostaglandin F2 alpha is also not, we are not using in Pakistan. In the medical treatment, there are certain features which have, we have to look. Then we start the medical treatment. 
medical treatment always given when the pregnancy size the as i uh, you saw the sac then the that that sac size is less than 3.5 cm and there is no fetal cardiac activity and there is no uh, and the beta hcg is less than uh, 1000 1000 to 2000 then we will get the im iv or oral to treat it with the folinic acid cover because this is an mp folate drug and then we will follow the uh, this medical treatment patient is admitted in the hospital and patient follows with the serum hcg levels which should fall 15% within the 4 to 7 days if it is not fall up to that फिफ्टीन परसेंट उसका जो फर्स्ट बीटे सीटी था वो अपने फर्स्ट से लाइक थाउजेंड था देन इट शुड फॉल एंड सेवन फिफ्टी हो जाना चाहिए फिफ्टीन परसेंट फॉल हो जाना चाहिए बट अगर हमने फोर टू सेवन डेज में कराया एंड दैट इज स्टिल थाउजेंड और मोर देन थाउजेंड और फॉल नहीं किया देन वी विल गेट द सेकेंड डोज ऑफ दीट एंड वी विल री कन्फर्म बाई दिल्प ऑफ बीटे एच सी और अगर फिर भी वो रेज रहा देन वी विल गो फॉर द सर्जिकल ट्रीटमेंट व्हाट इज द एडवांटेजेस मिनिमल पेशेंट को हॉस्पिटल में बहुत एक दो दिन के लिए व्हेन देयर इज सर्जरी पेशेंट लॉन्गर स्टे होगा क्विक रिकवरी हो जाती है मोर देन 90% सक्सेस रेट है अगर हम प्रॉपर्ली सेलेक्ट करें तो दिस एडवांटेज एज आई टोल्ड यू दिस इज एंटी फोलेट तो हमें वो देना पड़ता है एंड आल्सो वी हैव to be assured that uska renal function or liver function bilkul theek hai acha now what happens in the acute patient as that acute patient come with the shock then first of all we will treat her at shock uh, as you all know treatment of shock fluid replacement blood replacement iv line and life wrap with the lab raised and then just a blood transfusion now how we confirm that this is the there is a procedure which is known as calcium this is now we go for the surgical treatment laparotomy should be done at the earlier because the patient comes in the shock so if we delay the shock worsen so we will plan early laparotomy and what what we will do in the laparotomy we will go for the salpingectomy salping is known as fallopian tube and ectomy Uh, means removal. So we will go for the removal of the fallopian tube because when it ruptures, it distorts the fallopian tube a lot. There is no benefit from removing only along with the tube. Now what we can do? The Salpingectomy can be done by laparoscopically or laparotomy. Laparotomy is an open procedure by laparoscopy. You all know through a camera inserted into the abdominal cavity. This could be salpingectomy. The what are the procedures? As I told, the salpingectomy is ideal. But other procedures, if it is a coronal pregnancy, like in the home, then we can coronal resection, excision. We can excise and we can preserve the Uh, Now, what is the most accurate surgical treatment? Either laparotomy or laparoscopy, and salpingectomy versus salpingostomy or salpingjotomy. Salpingectomy, I told you, removal of the tube. Salpingostomy, repair of the tube, and salpingjotomy. Uh, Salpingectomy is repairing. Salpingostomy means to cut the portion of the tube. Now, this all depend upon the patient's wish. What the patient want? If the patient want that her tube began to move, like her previous, there is a previous ectopic pregnancy. Her one tube is removed, and now she again come with the uh, ectopic pregnancy, and she want to conserve her fertility. When the patient is hemodynamically stable, tubal pregnancy is accessible, unruptured, less than five centimeter in size, and contralateral tube is absent or damaged, then we will go for the salpingostomy or salpingotomy. This is you will see 
this is uh, uterus, this is fallopian tube and ovary, this is broad ligament, <laughs> this is the tube. Now, there are different sites, as I told you, of the tube. Now, what happened in the self-injectory? We will operate close to the, this is, now you can see, this is OB, and this is a topic pregnancy. Now, what happens? Operates close to the tube away from the this as this is you know ovarian vessel. So we will do from here that ovarian vessel did, did not damage and there is no compromise on the ovarian circulation. We can do cauterization from here from the this is uterine part of the fallopian tube. Isthmus part, and then this is internal part. This is laparoscopic procedure we are doing. Now we will do these are the division is done here. And you can see this is uterus, this is ectopic pregnancy which is ruptured. As I told you that laparoscopic self-injectomy done with the scissor and diathermy or endolu after passing loop through loop to pass catheter with stitch and then we cut the tube. Laparoscopic procedure obviously there is reduced blood loss, patient can go home early, mobilize early. And in the laparoscopic procedure, when we cut the tube, then we can suck the uh, remaining portion by suction irrigation, more stretches of the trophoblastic bed ensure, and the tubal incision left open. Now, all the same test as we are doing. Now, what happens in the chronic ectopic? When we go for the chronic ectopic, first of all, what? We go for the beta HCG, and it should be. Um, and uh, serum progesterone, but it's not so much uh, valuable. And we can go for the trophoplastic protein such as SPIN, PAPP, plasma associated pregnancy proteins, placental protein 14 and 21, ultrasound, laparoscopy. In the treatment of a chronic ectopic, chronic ectopic means either trial of the medical treatment is given or uh, patient is not uh, comes in a acute condition in shock, but there is uh, when we go through repeated ultrasound, there is mass, mass, mass in the uh, fallopian tube. Then uh, we always go for the surgical treatment, and in surgical treatment, sulfinjectomy, uh, when there is uh, other tube is normal. Or when there is a disease chronic and maybe it become infected, there is a hematocyl, colpotin is done to gain the pelvic, there may be a pelvic abscess formation and may distort the OD or ovarian tissue. So we will go for the sulfidia ultractomy. Now, in summary, the incidence of the topic pregnancy is rising. Why? Because there is increased rate of the infertility and increased rate of ovulation induction in IVF treatment. Early diagnosis is key to less invasive treatment. The choice of today is laparoscopic treatment because laparoscopic cause less lesions, less blood loss, early uh, uh, movement to the normal routine and the trend is towards conservative and if it is early diagnosed as uh, all the patients should uh, underwent for the ultrasound examination at four to six weeks, so it can be early diagnosed. Careful monitoring and proper counseling is mandatory. Ruptured ectopic should be unusual with complaint patient and appropriate medical care. Thank you. Any question? <laughs>